welcome back to the Breakwaters podcast. Good, good friend over here. I know him for four years now. Uh, Jonathan Rosa, how you doing? I'm good, George. I appreciate you having me, man. It's been a while since we've seen each other, so it's uh, it's good to see you again. And you want to tell everyone about yourself? Sure, sure, yeah. So, uh, yeah, my name is Jonathan, and um, yeah, I met George. It's been about four years now, uh, back when I for, kind of first started with the Royals um, in a guest services role. So, uh, yeah, I, uh, a little bit about me. I am I'm 29 years old. I started with the Royals in February of 2016, um, and, you know, I have cerebral palsy. So um, I've walked with Walker my whole life, and, um, you know, but I've always been around baseball, always been passionate about baseball and finding out how I can make a difference in the game and how I can be involved. So, uh, you know, I got started very early on, um, you know, even when I was in middle school, just being around the game and being around my, my teammates and friends. Um, and that kind of carried on all through high school um, as a student manager. And then I was a student manager for four years um, at the University of Kansas for the, for the Jayhawk baseball team. So I'm very fortunate in every aspect of, of my life. And, um, you know, long story short, ended up here with the Royals um, right after the World Series um, in 2015. I started in 2016. And then, um, yeah, I currently am uh, working in the community impact for the Kansas City Royals, the community impact department. So um, I do a variety of different things as it relates to the community. Um, so I oversee the 50-50 grapple at the games, um, as well as a few other community initiatives throughout the year. Thanks, Jonathan. It's great to have people like you. I remember you stepped up. Uh, I remember you were at the guest service and I had the coordinator of the uh, community partnerships. That's a, it's a big role. Yeah. Thank you. And yeah, so let's, uh, let's get, let's get into it. Uh, I know, I know you weren't a big Royals guy. I know you grew up in Mexico city. You're a big Yankee fan. I remember you telling me that. Yeah, man. Yeah. You have good memories. So I grew up, uh, grew up, um, I was born in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, spent a couple years there. Then I moved to Mexico City um, when I was really young. So while, while I was there, we were watching TV, ESPN was on, and the Yankees were playing, and um, Derek Jeter came up to bat. And, you know, kind of kind of love it first sight there, I guess, with the Yankees. But, uh, you know, I, I watched him play. I watched how he carried himself on and off the field. And, and Derek ended up being a guy that I kind of idolized um, really for, for my entire life. Um, you know, and I was just fortunate enough. It's kind of a long story, but I was fortunate enough to meet him a couple of times and, um, you know, kind of tell him what he's meant to me. But, yeah, I spent most of my – most of my uh, I guess you can even say my adult life um, a Yankee fan, you know, and it wasn't until the Royals started paying my bills and, and Derek Jeter retired and, and the rest of the crew retired that I said, you know, maybe it's time that I I, I, I switch my allegiances here. But um, – but no, I always hold a uh, special place in my heart for for the Yankees and for Jeter because he, uh, he he's a big reason why I'm in the game today. Yo, Jonathan, you're always welcome back to be a Yankee fan. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big Yankee fan. Yeah. So uh, I know Jeter meant to you. Uh, you you met him at Kauffman Stadium. Right? Uh, what did he say? Any inspirational words? Yeah, man. So I'll, I'll give you a little bit of a longer version. Um, so I first met him in, I think it was 2004. Um, it was a spring training game um, against, well, no, it was just a spring training practice. And at the time I was living in Kansas City and my dad and I just thought we'd take a trip and go watch him practice. And uh, they were letting everybody uh, into, into the stadium. This is at the time, uh, Legends Field. It's now George M. M. Steinbrenner Field, uh, I believe. So they were letting everyone in except for my dad and I. And uh, finally, a security guard came over and said, are, are you Jonathan? And I said, yeah, yeah. And he said, well, why don't you come with me? We got we got something fun planned for you today. And, uh, you know, they brought me into the front offices of the spring training facility. Um, and I, I met with the gentleman there. And, and uh, you know, they said, we heard you were a big Derek Jeter fan. And they said, we have a special day planned for you. And they gave me a ball. And they, they said, this is for Derek to sign. Nobody else signs this ball. From there, I went into the uh, 
<clears throat> they brought me right outside of the locker room, the clubhouse, and every player and coach came out one by one and, <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, introduced themselves. <clears throat> so Joe Torrey, Don Mattingly, um, Hideki Matsui, a -Rod, every player one by one came out. Uh, the last guy to come out was Derek Jeter. So um, Derek came out and we talked for a while. We were just in the tunnel and he said, John, what do you want to do when you grow up? And I said, I want to play shortstop for the Yankees. And uh, he said, well, why don't you give me a few years before you take my spot, okay? So so that right there, I mean, I, I always remember that line um, pretty much any time I think about it, that, that right there. And then, um, you know, fast forward a few years, uh, I got a chance <clears throat> to meet him again uh, the year he retired. Um, they were playing a game here at Kauffman Stadium in Kansas City. And uh, this is before I was working for them, um, but just through mutual connections, um, had the opportunity to uh, to go down there and meet him before the game. So I uh, went down to the field and I uh, brought a picture of us um, back from 2004. And I said, you know, Mr. Jeter, I know you don't remember me, but you were really good to me and my family when I first met you back in 2004. And I said, you're a big reason why I'm walking better now without my walker. You're a big reason why I want to work in baseball. Um, you know, so I thank you for that. And then he said, Jonathan, all that's great, but I didn't do any of that. Like you were the one doing all the work. Um, you know, so, you know, just an unbelievable guy, the same guy that I met back in 2004. He was, he was just as nice, um, to this, to this, uh, shy, nervous kid, even as a, uh, I was probably 21 at the time when I met him again, 21 or 22. So yeah, still the same great guy. So, um, yeah. Thanks man. So I, so I like to see, uh, to hear about, uh, Derek yeah. is such a great guy in Porsche and get to meet him. My my dad has a, a photograph of 918. And I always have that have that in front of me. I was like, 918 is like this is the best team I have it. Jeter, Mariano. This is the this is the team. So there's some names on that on that one, I bet. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So before the Royals, you worked at uh, Kent University. How how was that? Yeah, I mean, it was a dream. You know, I um, I spent most of my life uh, in Kansas. I've grown up around here, and uh, my sister went to the University of Kansas, too. So she's a, she's a few years older than me. So I grew up a big Jayhawk fan, and, um, you know, when I was applying to schools, I knew I wanted to be involved in the game and, and hopefully, you know, with the spot with, in a dream situation, a spot with the KU baseball team. So uh, I reached out. Um, when I was in high school, I just shot an email to the head coach of, of KU's team, uh, Rich Price, who, uh, uh, you know, long story short, uh, I owe that man a whole lot. So um, it, it ended up working out in, in, the, in the best way possible. I, um, I ended up being a student manager um, while I was there. So um, I did everything from uh, my, my main roles. I, I did the video, <clears throat> I charted the games behind home plate for every game. So I did the video and stats and I would kind of sync it all up after each game in practice so that you can go through and see what you did on a particular bat. So um, I did, did that. It was kind of my main role. Um, you know, I traveled with the team um, everywhere we went. And then, uh, you know, anything from passing out gear to laundry to, um, you know, summer camps. Um, you know, my first year early on, I did a lot of scoreboard operating. So uh, just as I was getting started, so I did that too, but it was a great four years. Um, I got to travel to places I've never been to before and do things that most kids my age um, don't get to do. And uh, I'm very grateful for that. And one of the trips that we got to take was actually uh, to the Dominican Republic. Um, we, we did that um, during the Christmas break and it was a very eye-opening um experience for me to see how how life is over there and how big baseball is in the Dominican so um I owe the University of Kansas uh, a lot uh there and coach Price coach Price is every reason why I'm here today so um had a great time there and I'm very fortunate that's awesome and the stack came over there that was great uh 
Yeah, uh, we, we I was fortunate enough to play in, in Greece for basketball, so it's always it's always, yeah. it's always great to see like around like the country there they 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 go crazy about basketball. So it's definitely I know how you feel. Yeah. I wasn't uh, fortunate enough to play uh baseball. I got cut my my high school's like so dominant in baseball, so I didn't get a chance. I I I, I tried out, I didn't make the team, so I kind of fell fell into other sports. So. That's right. You got a pretty good squad over there. It sounds like. <laughs> yeah. You got a pretty good team. Yeah, yeah, we had, we had great. My my co-host actually, he's uh, he, he couldn't make it to. It. He was like one of the best players. I was one of the best players, so it was good. Now I play tennis and cross country for my. Uh, been in uh, high school. I've been doing. I'm doing it in college my last year, so it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah, good deal. Yeah, so. Good. Let's go. Let's go to the Royals now. I thought you were there in 2015. I thought you had the the World Series ring. You're, you're, oh, you're, you're man. I, I <laughs> yeah. I came in. I came in. Actually, my first week with the organization um, was I was yeah. It was the week that everyone in the front office uh, was getting their rings. So it was uh, it was pretty cool. You know, I was sitting up. I can remember. You know, they almost had like an assembly, you know, for everyone to get presented their rings. And I was one of the few new new faces in the organization. So they had me up. I was actually sitting up. Um, you know, we had a uh, main receptionist desk, you know, where you call in to the to the team. You can speak to somebody. Um, and since everyone's getting their rings, they didn't really have anyone to sit up there and man the phone. So um, I was up there at that reception desk on the on my first week. Um, when it was pretty cool, I, I didn't know at the time, I didn't know anything about what people did, you know, if I got a call where to transfer it, what people do. So I was nervous. Like I was hoping that nobody, nobody called while I was up there, but no, it was, it was cool to see everyone come back, um, you know, from that and, and have their boxes with their giant rings in them. So yeah, I came in just after that, but it's fun to be a part of. Yes, that's awesome. Uh, our fortune enough was uh, I wore a ring from the San Francisco Giants. I kind of what, what you I wrote a letter to the San Francisco Giants and this guy Rick Mears. I don't know if you know him, but he's like, oh, here's this ring you gotta wear, and I would pose with the ring. I'll I'll send you a picture later. Um, yeah, oh, there you go. Was that the 2014 ring then? Yeah, the 2014 ring. Yeah, that one's that one's a, a sore one around here. I was <laughs> I was at that game with my dad. Actually, yeah, my, my roommate in college. We were at game seven. Uh, we had tickets. This is before I worked there, obviously. And uh, yeah, he, my roommate, is a uh, from San Francisco. Was from San Francisco, and so I'm like, I gotta take him. And uh, let's just say he left a lot happier than I did. But yeah. Yeah, really, I was really pulling for you guys. You guys beat the Mets, so I'm, I'm all good for that. There you go. There you go. I love it. <laughs> yeah, let's go to let's go to some some quick fire. That's what we do here. Let's we'll just, just spit out the the quick fire questions. Uh, your favorite barbecue spot from Kansas City? You gotta tell us what's the favorite bar- barbecue spot. All right. So there's there's a lot there's a lot uh, a few like I'd say like there's like a core floor in Kansas City, right? Now, I, I feel like I need to mention that I'm a very picky eater. So I eat like three things. But whenever I get barbecue, I, I have branched out. Now I can get like brisket or burn ends, but usually it's like a turkey sandwich. So I'm not a great person to ask for advice on food, but there is a place called Arthur Bryant's and it's, uh, it's really good. And what I like about it is it's been there for a, a very, very long time. Maybe but I want to say... Uh, if not a hundred years, pretty close to it, and nothing has changed at all in the in the place. So you walk in, um, it's a little. It looks like a hole in the wall place, but they have so much history there. They have photos with every president, every person that's been through those doors, and um, it's really good. So Arthur Barnes. Nice, nice. Uh, what's your favorite? Favorite person, player in the world? Uh, do, you, do you meet any players? Like, who, who's your favorite? Like, connection in, in, in the organization? 
Yeah, it could, be, it could be current, it could be past. Like, there's like a moment with like a player, like always says hi to you and things like that. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple. So I'll give a current and a past player. Uh, current, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of Salvador Perez. Um, I just love love the way he plays the game. You know, he's a great guy on and off the field. But but the guy you see on TV having fun, he's a big kid. And, um, you know, I gravitate. I like the guys that play the game um, like a kid, and he, he's one of those. On top of the fact that he's, he's one of the best catchers, if not the best catcher in the game. So um, Salvi, Salvi takes that one, uh, you know, on the team. Uh, I also want to give a shout-out to Brett Phillips who uh, is, is not with us anymore. He's, he's with Tampa now, but he's another one of those, man. He, he just has a lot of fun. You, you see him on TV a lot now doing a lot of the mic'd up stuff. He, he's a character, and he, uh, he has a lot of fun. So I like those guys that go out and have fun with the game, and both of those guys definitely do that. That's awesome. Now, <laughs> think about the interview process of how, how we met. I sent the letter to you. You got to read you gotta tell everybody though. Know, this is how you, this is how you want if you want to meet somebody. You know, you you write a letter. So take me to how you got the letter and what was it about? Like, did he like eye pop? Was it eye popping to you? Yeah, man. Look, and correct me if I'm wrong. If I miss out on any details here, but uh, but no, you know, like like we kind of mentioned earlier, I started off in guest services, so. Um, my role, my role for my first couple of years was uh, the guest experience specialist. So I dealt with pretty much anything that that dealt with the fans in some capacity. So you could, if you wrote into the roles, if you called in about uh, you know feedback or anything like that, um, you usually got to me. So uh, checked the mail one day, uh, had a letter from you, and I think you were uh, you had, had wrote a letter mentioning that you were visiting a number of different ballparks. Um, you know, and I think it was you, your dad, and your brother, maybe, right? Uh, my, my friend, my friend Adam was. Uh, okay, that's right. Adam, friend, yeah. big, big fan of the podcast. That's right. Love it. Love it. Shout out to Adam. So yeah, we. Uh, I got the letter, and uh, and I remember. Yeah, you were you saying from New York, the Yankee. I, I saw the Yankee. I think you're wearing a Yankee jersey. You had some photos in there of other ballparks you've been to, and. Um, you know, I always love people that are coming to new ballparks and, and want to check it out. So, uh, you know, fortunate, you know, we can't do that for every single person that writes in, but you got it at the right place at the right time. And, um, you know, you took the time to do it. And, you know, it's it's uh, it's it's that's what you get. Hard work pays off. You know, when you, you can never you never it never hurts to try. You know, you can get shot down, but if you don't say anything, you'll you'll never get the opportunity. So kudos to you and, and, and Adam for, for trying it out and, and then reaching out and, and making the effort. And uh, yeah, and then from there, it was just a matter of coordinating, um, you know, your, your seats, getting you out there. And, and we met up and here we are. So yeah, four, four plus years later. So um, funny how all that works out. Yeah, thank, thank you. Like you're a great part of my trip. Uh, I remember saying you did a cross country road trip. You're like the first. You guys were the first stop. So it was a. Uh, it was great seeing you. Great to keep in touch. Like you said, only four years later. Great, great person to talk to. And uh, and if you want to go check the, out the video, I have it on my old past videos. The Kansas City Rose Kaufman Stadium. Go go check that out. Uh, so what's what's your favorite color? Favorite color? Uh, well, I went to KU, right? And so the Jayhawks, we 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 bleed red and blue. Um, so I think with that in mind, and the fact that the Royals are blue, I'd have to say blue is my favorite color. But black, I also like black. Black. Some people are like black's not a color. To me, black's a color. So I'd say I'd say black and blue. Nice. A favorite TV show. Uh, hands down, the office, yeah, right. the office for sure. Um, that's kind of an old, older one now. Now, if, it, if you were to ask me today, uh, I'm a big fan of Ted Lasso. Um, it's a show on Apple TV, so if you haven't seen that, um, definitely, definitely watch it. It's it's really funny, and there's a lot of Kansas City references in there. Um, uh, because Jason Sudeik is, is from KC, so it's a really good show. It's uh, <laughs> awesome. What about a uh, favorite cereal? 
Oh, that's, that's a good one, George. That's a good one. Uh, favorite cereal? Uh, favorite cereal? Let's go with uh, Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Yeah, for sure. A little Cinnamon Toast Crunch with no milk. I don't, I don't, I'm weird. I like my cereal dry. I know I'm going to get some weird looks for that, but that's that's me. I right, feel so like my brother. He he gets hamburger, no cheese on this. Every, yeah. every time he got it, it's like hamburger, no cheese. I mean, you can't got something else. Come on. Yeah, yeah. I, can, I can branch out to a cheeseburger, but yeah, I, I like my milk and I like my cereal, but I keep them separate. <clears throat> coffee or tea in the morning? Uh, coffee or tea, is that what you said? Yes. How about how about neither? I've actually never had coffee. Fun fact: I've never had coffee, which is very strange. And I really I've I've sipped tea, but I've never really had tea either. So uh, for for me, neither. Uh, I would say I would say I'm a uh, milk or water guy. That's awesome. Yeah, Brandon Steiner was on my show, and he said he said he doesn't drink coffee or tea either. I don't know if you know him, but. Yeah, he's like he was a memorabilia guy. The uh, the Yanks. He's like on Steiner Sports. So he was on yeah, there. Sports, yeah, yeah. He said that. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I gotta tell. I was like, I gotta tell you that. Yeah, I've never had coffee. Yeah, I don't, I'm, it's 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 weird, but well. the last the trivia question to wrap up. Okay. Uh, back to the day when I met you. You know who was my favorite player in the Royals? It's a and, and yes. you gotta know this. It's, I do know it. I do know it, and it's because we got some crease ties. Uh, <laughs> he's no longer he's in Cincinnati now, but another another good friend of ours over here, Mike Mustakis. Yes. Nice. Sure. So I, I of course I remember that. Yeah, he's a, he's another really really good guy. If you were, I would put him at the top of my list, just down to earth guy. So yeah, Moose. I remember we said it was like we gotta sit third base side and it was beach and I'm like, oh man, come on. <laughs> yep. 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 Love it. All right, Jonathan. Thanks. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for taking your time out. Always a pleasure having you on. And I love what you're doing for the game. And uh I'll see you in a splash. Thank you, George. Yeah, we'll uh We'll catch up soon. I, I know it. And, uh, yeah, let's keep in touch. But uh, great work with everything. I love what you're doing. And, obviously, uh, um, yeah, I love to see everything great that you're up to. So keep it up. And, and I appreciate you having me on. Definitely. Well, where could everybody find you? You have Instagram, Twitter. Where could people find you? Yeah, yeah, man. I'm on, um, on uh, Instagram, Twitter. Um, my, my handles are the same for both. So it's uh, Jonathan. Just my name, J O N A T H A N, uh, the number two. You can probably guess where that number two came from. So, Jonathan, two, and then Rosa, my last name, R O S A. That's it. All right. That's, that's it. We'll see you in a splash. <laughs>